Sit down in a comfortable seated position. Before we begin the actual poses, we will do some warm up. And before we warm up, let's get ourselves centered mentally and physically on the mat. Press your palms onto your knees. Straight back. Smile your face, uh, even though it's Monday or Monday blues. Doesn't matter. You are now on this mat. Happy practice. Close your eyes. Long deep breath. Whether it is a good day so far for you, because Monday is not over yet, or whether it is not so good or some things do not turn out expectedly, it doesn't matter. Let's move on into the future as we spend our time briefly on this mat, getting our center. Take long deep breath. Especially you will think you didn't have a good day so far, make it a good practice so you get your 60 minutes worth of time. And don't let, don't never ever let anything that happened before this practice affect you. Stay in the present. Take a few more breaths. Focus on your breathing so that your mind is really focused on your breathing and it is, it is still on this mat and not drifting away or daydreaming. Gently open your eyes. A brief warm up to your neck. So take your thumbs, interlace fingers like this, so that you can get your thumbs underneath your chin. I think I maybe I could be closer, closer to you guys. That's yeah, right. And then turn your chin up. Look up to the ceiling and breathe. Get a good stretch to the front of your throat. Breathe, breathe, breathe. If you spend this whole day until now looking at your computer, your laptop or your phone, whether working from home or somewhere else, it's time to give a good stretch to this front of your throat. For five, four, three, two, and one. Release. Back to the front. Stretch your arms forward. We're going to take a double stretch. That means you get a stretch to your shoulders and to your neck at the same time to prepare for the poses. So take your right hand up slightly above your left hand. Cross it over. When you cross it over, do your best. If it's tight, you tend to turn your chest. Keep your chest turning, still facing me, facing forward. And then use the other hand, bend the elbow. Keep your right arm still straight. And clamp the arm close to your chest. Now you turn your head towards your right. You get a side stretch of your neck, you get the stretch to your right arm. Or in this case, a bit of a chest, your right upper arm, a bit of a shoulder, and the upper back. Stay and breathe. For five. Four. Calm deep breathing. Three. Breathe into the stretch. Two. One. Release. Turn back to face the front. The other side. Left arm straight and lift it up. Turn it first to the best you can and then use the other arm. Bend the elbow. Clamp it. Try to keep this left arm straight about shoulder height. Squeeze it. Oh, my shoulder is tighter. I feel it immediately compared to my other arm. Just be mindful. Turn your head towards the left. As you're turning, notice whether your left shoulder is, is poking up to touch your chin. Take it down so that your neck is long, your left shoulder is somewhat relaxed, but you're also feeling the stretch, taking your left shoulder blade down. For five, four, three, two, one. Release. Shake it off. One more stretch for your shoulders and then we'll work on the other poses uh, for the other body parts. Right arm up. Bend the right arm. Use your left fingers to hold the right elbow. Take it up and back and take it towards the left. You'll feel the stretch to your shoulder as well as your upper back. If you have the space, right fingers like this, you can see me, to grab your left tricep or the armpit. Go deeper. For those who can, if you are grabbing the armpit already, then you can release the other arm, straighten it, and try to press it down. Once you press it down, 
you clamp down on the fingers to pull the right arm more towards the left. So it's moving past your left ear. If it's not grab, if you're not grabbing the armpit, you couldn't grab it, then don't go so far. Don't keep it straightened. Just keep your left arm still holding, your left finger still holding the right elbow for four. For three, for two, and for one. Slowly release. The other side. Left arm up, bend the elbow behind you. Right arm, right fingers to hold the left elbow. Take it up and back and towards the right side. If there is space, then your right, your left fingers can grab the tricep or the armpit. If you can grab the armpit very easily, you straighten the other arm and straighten and try to press it down and that will deepen the stretch. No pain to your body, please. Do your best you can for five. Four. Three. Two. And one. Slowly release. Shake it up. Okay, I lied. One more stretch for your shoulders, the other side. Interlace your fingers behind your back. Let me go back to my mat. Sitting in a cross-legged position. Lift the interlace fingers up. And then we start to work in your hips too. You lean forward, straight back, and bow forward. If it's stiff here, you cannot go any further. You stay there. If you have blocks, use the blocks so that the blocks will support your forehead when you go down in that position like this. Stay. Working, your, working on your shoulders with interlaced fingers while well, you get a bit of a hip opening with this falling forward position. For five. For four. Three. Two. And one. Release. Lift yourself back up. And let's come into your tabletop. We work on your shoulder stretch, just warm the body up, including your neck. Let's work on your spine and then let's work on your hips later, and then we start to work on the poses. Tabletop, so stretch your arms down, forearms are straight, elbows are straight, I mean your palms facing down, your fingers pointing forward, shoulders above your palms at shoulder width distance. Knees below the hips at hip distance. The toes may be tucked under like this. Or you can point the toes like a ballerina. Look forward between your palms or look slightly forward. Inhale to your cow. Hollow your back. Head goes up. Exhale cat. Round the back. Chin to chest. Inhale cow. Exhale cat. Round the back. Chin to chest. Inhale to your cow position. Exhale to your cat. Inhale to your cow. 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 Exhale to your cat. One last time. Inhale to your cow. Exhale to your cat. Inhale back to tabletop position. Now shift the weight towards the left side and just simply take your right foot forward with a right knee bent on right knee bent. Lift your chest up, palms on your front knee. Let's get the stretch to your left hip flexor. Move the front knee forward and backwards to get the stretch. If you have more space to stretch, then you can slide the right foot forward more like this. So keep the knee preferably above the ankle or behind the ankle so that there's less stress on the knee tendon especially. You have been sitting all day, time to give the hip flexor a good old stretch. The good old hip flexors become tight and short and contracting when you sit down. Stay and breathe, calm deep breathing. And now you keep still, sink the hips down, engage your core by sucking your belly in, lift the arms up. If you feel good, you can take a back bend, or you don't have to, okay? I'm doing a little back bend here in this arch. Or you don't have to. Stay for five. Four. Three. 
two, and one. Release. Switch sides. Take the right foot back in the tabletop and take your left foot forward. And then you can adjust so that your bottom knee, your right knee is on the mat. You can point your toes and you tuck under. Rest the palms onto your left knee, the one in front. Adjust so that the knee still is above the ankle or slightly behind when you come to your full stretch. And then bounce front and back. So when you bounce to the when you move it to the front, the knee shall always be above the ankle or just behind. Well actually there's nothing wrong with the knee moving past towards the toes. But for some people you might feel some excessive stretch to your knee. So just want to be sure, since I do not know who you are over, some of you are my regular students, some uh, new friends, so welcome again. So you just do your best but don't feel any pain to your body. And then you keep still. You find your maximum stretch, maybe go to only about 90%. Hold back 10% to allow some space for your breath to be steady and calm. Every time you exhale, contract your belly into your spine to stabilize your back so you get your core muscles all working gently and lift the arms up or take a back bend. For five, four, three, two, and release. Now your first downward facing dog. Rest the palms down on the mat, making the shape of an inverted letter V, double dog. Walk your dog, bend one leg, straighten the other. Do it carefully and do it slowly, don't have to rush. And then you keep still, you try to take your heels down to your mat, try to get your buttocks higher to the ceiling while the shoulders are pushing your chest backwards towards your legs. Look between your legs or between your knees. Breathe. And then walk your fingers backwards towards the feet, coming to a forward fold. Many options here. If your hamstrings feel good, you can rest and press your palms down. Oops, somewhere right here in the screen. Palms down. If not, you can let your body hang down or grab the opposite elbows, or you can even bounce up and down if you want to, to get the stretch to your hamstring and to your back. So this yoga strength class is, is not just using your body weight as, as resistant as you hold, although many poses will be that, like arm balances, but several poses will use your flexibility. So you have to have the muscles to be able to hold in that space, like a floating split for example, or not holding your foot when you take, a look, when you take your foot up to the air. So let's get some stretch and some space in your hips, in your shoulders, before we go into those poses. For those who want to, you can wrap your hands behind, fingers pointing down, feet together, elbows behind your knees, and then get yourself down with your head between your shins. Stay for five, four, three, two, and one. Walk your fingers back to your high plank position. So move it to the front of the mat. Let's start the yoga strength class with your shoulders and then we move to your core and then to the hips and to your legs and then to your back. Stay. Keep your buttocks as, as high as your shoulders, not too high that it becomes like this, not too low that it becomes like an upward dog or like a cobra pose. Keep looking down or push your chest up. Stay. We're gonna hold here for 10 more breaths. So shoulder activation here. Are you breathing? 
No sneak away, stay on this man, come on, don't give up. Mental strength is also important, don't give up. If you need to stop, pause for a breath, take your knees down and come back up in your next breath, okay? Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Lower the knees down, catch your breath, take a little flow as you exhale. Bend the elbow slowly, chest and chin down. Cobra pose, pour your toes, inhale, slide your chest forward and up, either elbows straight or bent, downward facing dog as you exhale. Let's work on the shoulders again, we'll work on the Spend a few minutes, well actually it's more than a few minutes, working on your shoulders. So come into the high plank. Let's all work on this pose together. Shift the weight towards your left palm and your left foot. Lift up the right leg up. Take it only as high as your hip, so not too high. Keep pushing your chest up. Five more breaths. Four. Press on your knuckles, don't just feel the weight on your wrists. Three, two, one. Take it down, downward dog. Okay, next side, high plank. Adjust, check that your hips are as low as your shoulders, or as high as your shoulders, whichever you look at it. Shift the weight towards the other side, your right palm and your right foot. Lift the left leg as high as your left as your hip. Stay. Let your left toes be pointing down, so you flex your ankle. Breathe, suck your belly in, so some core engagement would be good. Four, keep pushing your chest up. Three, two, one, downward dog, press it back. Inhale to your plank. Exhale, knees, chest, chin down to your mat. Cobra pose, inhale. Downward facing dog as you exhale. Take a few breaths in downward dog. I'm gonna turn to face you so you can see. Stay in this downward dog. Okay. Come back to your high plank. Now tell you what, take your knees down and look at me so you can see what's happening. So before you go to the next pose, I'll show you. It's a combination of the pose and movements. So the aim is to keep your shoulder strength to keep your body very still while you try to disturb your body. What does that mean? It means that you're moving your leg. One leg I will show you to try to move but your shoulders are very strong. So the muscles are twitching a bit to keep your body still without jerking left and right. So don't do first, look at me otherwise you cannot see because you're looking down. Right, so you look at me when I do. You're gonna, I'm gonna come to the high plank. I'm gonna take my right foot up. I'm going to bend the right knee to the side. I'm going to make big circles. Notice my shoulders do not move front and back. It is too still. So you get the mobility to your hips, but you try to make big circles with the right knee. Okay? If it's side view, it's like this. Notice my shoulders are very still. Can you see? It's not moving. It's not going up and down. It's not doing this. At the same time, my core is also working, so I'm not doing this. I keep my shoulders still, I keep my hips still above the same height as the shoulders. Alright, now your turn. So hard to talk and do this at the same time, so I'm gonna catch my breath while you guys do it. Okay, come up to your high plank, shoulders above your wrist. Press your knuckles down please guys, don't just feel the weight on your wrist. You will start to feel the pain when your wrist cannot take the weight and then wrist injuries take a long time to heal. Hips as high as your shoulders. Take your right leg as high as your hip, right leg straight. Okay, keep still. Bend the right knee towards the right armpit and then make 10 big circles in one direction. The faster you go, the more difficult it is because the faster you go, you generate more momentum and your shoulders might really work hard to keep your body still. Go on your own please. 10, 9, 8, 7. I'm just counting at this speed. 5, you don't have to follow my speed. Four, three, 
two, one. Switch direction, same leg. Ten big circles. Try to disturb your body with this movement while getting the, your hip joint to be lubricated on the right side but your shoulders keeping still. For five, last five. Four, three, two, and one. Release. Take a child's pose. Catch your breath. Or just sit up and look at me. Very easy, I cannot see you. Maybe some of you will be really like this. Very angry at the teacher. It's only the first pose. Come on. Okay, get ready for the second side. Oh man, so fast. Yes, let's go, let's go, let's go. Ready. We have 35 minutes left of this practice. So fast, it's really 5.55. High plank. Shoulders above your waist. Check your alignment. Hips as high as your shoulders. Suck your belly in. A little rounded back will be nice like a cat pose. Lift the left leg up. Keep it straight. As high as your shoulders and your hips. And then bend the left knee towards the chest or towards the armpit on the left side. And then try to disturb the body, making 10 circles in one direction only. Go ahead. Faster you go, more difficult it is. Shoulders trying to keep your body still. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Switch direction. Ready and go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Release. Take another child's pose. See your buttocks onto your heels. Stretch your arms forward. So in that pose and in that movement, it's mostly a measure of, please sit up, it's mostly a measure of your shoulder strength, just holding your body weight while the rest of our body is trying to disturb the entire thing. So now we're going to add the stretch into the, into the equation. So what you do, you be sitting, sitting down. So you can sit in your cross leg or you can sit like me in child's pose position. I think I better come closer so you can see, right? Okay, what you do is that you're going to bend the elbows 90 degrees like this. You can see, not too high, not too low. Close up the elbows, do the best you can. If your shoulders are tight, you feel it's difficult. That's why you want to create space. Close them together. It helps if you take your elbows, your fingers towards you, you can bend it this way. It's more difficult once you start to straighten your elbows. Okay, close them. So keep your, the maximum you will do is that you come to 90 degrees. Your lower arm and your upper arm 90 degrees or 45 or 60 degrees like this, okay? Until you touch your face, then it will be 45. Or you can take it this way, but I think I prefer you this way. Stay. Now the strength is there. Now you have the stretch. You're stretching your shoulders as well as like your upper back. You want to keep the space by pressing your elbows together. So it's not easy. Like someone is, hold, like someone is facing you and using their hands to keep your elbows together. Lift the fingers high or try to straighten the elbows. Like this. You can see my arm shaking. Maybe not. Breathe. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Oh, intense, intense, intense. Come on. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. Don't give up. 3. You adjust so that you can still be able to hold 2. And one, release. Ah, oh, shake it off. Counter pose, interlace fingers, stretch it up. Oh. Either look forward or just arch back. And release. So you can see strength is not just simply using muscular strength to hold something or to carry something. Sometimes you have to stretch the muscle or another muscle while you get the muscle that you're working on to be strengthened. So this pose works on this this way. And many poses we'll be working on for the rest of this class will be similar. Okay, take the downward dog. Step your right foot forward, coming to the high lunge pose. Back knee off the mat using the hip flexor stretch you had done earlier so that you feel more comfortable in this high lunge. Reach the arms up to the ceiling. Stay and breathe. So there is some leg strength added to this pose in addition to the hip stretch. And 
Now you're going to get your front leg straightened. So you take out a bit of the soreness of the front thigh. You can hop the left toes closer towards you by maybe by half a foot. So that it's not too wide, you can easily stay in balance. Back heel off the mat. So you bring some activation to the back heel while not taking this pose with a flat, with the foot flat on the floor. Take your hands up. Again, bend the elbows like this. 90 degrees. Either 90 degrees or take it slow, closer, closer to your face, it is too intense. The same thing. This time you keep your leg, the front leg straightened. You lift up. You don't arch back. You lift up the arms. Try to straighten the arms to the best you can, but keep your elbows still closer together. Elbows touching, elbows touching. Stay. Five. Suck like a core in so you don't back bend. Four. Three. Two and one. Release. Please take a downward dog. Reset, recalibrate when you're downward dog. Good. Okay, step the left foot forward. Let's work on the other side. First, get a look, get a high lunge position. Back toes further away. You want to get a deep stretch for your hip flexor like this. So your front thigh is horizontal if you can. You don't have to. Rest, lift the arms up. Now front leg straightens, hop the back toes closer towards you by half a foot. Again, bend the elbows 90 degrees, try to keep the elbows about shoulder height. Stay there, don't arch back, keep your back straight, suck your ribcage and your core in. You can see the difference from here, becomes here. From here, becomes here. Look forward and then try to straighten the elbows directly up to the ceiling. Keep the elbows touching, don't release the elbows. Squeeze your legs together to stay balanced. For five, four, three, two, one, and release. All right, double dog. Here's my cat. There you are. Come down to your mat first. One more pause for your shoulders, and then later we work on one arm balance. Well, later we work one of the core, we combine the core strength and the shoulder strength for one arm balance. All right, so we're gonna try the side plank, but we're gonna move. So, the first round simply the side plank, if you are familiar with the side plank pose, is like this. Okay, you're gonna move from high plank to side plank, high plank to side plank. If this is a bit too tough for you, for your top leg to be on top of the bottom leg, place it either in front on the mat, so both feet on the mat, or you can bend the top leg. Bend the knee in the center so that the knee is still above the ankle and you stay. When you go to the high plank, you have to take your leg back and flip back and then you work on the other side with your top leg in the middle of the mat. Okay? Okay. So we're going to take the first round very quickly, side plank first, for five deep breaths on one side. So come into the right side of your mat and then flip onto your right palm and your right foot behind you. Side plank on the right side. Find your adjustment. The key important part for your shoulder strength here is your right shoulder. So your, look, look at my right ear. It is not sinking down like this. It's lifted up. So your left foot is on top of the right foot and your left hand is up to the ceiling. Or you can place the left foot in front, both feet on the mat, for the easier version or the next easier version, bend the top leg, your left leg, in the middle of the mat, like this. Stay for five. Keep lifting, don't let your ears sink towards the bottom shoulder. Four, three, two, and one. Release. Take the downward dog first, reset. And go to the other side. Side plank on the left. I'm going to face my back, left foot and left palm down, right leg either on top or in front, feet together or right leg in the middle of the mat with the knee bent like this and reach your right hand up. Keep lifting, don't let your ears sink down towards the shoulder. For five, four, three, two, and one. Release, take the downward dog.
Okay. Come down to your knees. Slight change of plan for the sequence I'm proposing. So this is what it looks like. Look at me first before we go. So that's easier for you to do the pose without looking at the screen because you're not familiar what to do. So you're going to go back to your side plank, but take the easy option first. Top leg on top. So in this case, my left leg on top, my right leg, my right leg is, is at the bottom. Okay? Maybe the screen looks different this way. So let me show this way first. So you're going to work on this. You're going to keep pushing this. You're going to lift the core up. You're going to float this leg up. The top leg. And then you're going to flip back to your high plank for one breath. You're going to flip over to the side plank on the other side. You're going to bend the other top leg, knee down, stay up for one breath, and then you're going to float it up. And then you're going to release and back down to your high plank. Okay? We do this in five flips. That means each side five times. Get ready. Come into your high plank position. Okay, go to your side plank on the right side. So right palm down, right foot down, left leg on top. Place it, the left leg, place it in the middle of the mat like this. And up. Push your body up. Don't let your ears sink down to your shoulder. One more breath. And then straighten this left leg up to the other side. Let's lift for three, two, one. Press it down. Release high plank. And then go to the other side. Right foot in the middle of the mat. Bend the knee. Lift the right hand up. Stay five, four, three, two, one. This leg straightens. Float there, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Press it down and release. Four more times, try not to rest the foot down when we flip over, okay? Side plank on the right side. Left leg in the middle. Lift it up and then left leg straightens. Now, don't touch the mat now. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Side plank now. To the other side. And then bend the top leg. Place it on the middle of the mat. Your right leg, stay. And lift it up. 5, 4, 3, Two, one. Take this leg all the way back to your high plank. And then side plank on the right side. This time, don't even touch the floor. Swing this left leg forward. Take it up. Five, four, three, two, one. Back to high plank. Side plank on your left side. Right hand up. Don't touch the floor. Right leg straight. Swing it towards the right side. Five, four, three, two, one. Two more times on your horns. High plank. Step plank on the right side, take your left leg all the way to your left, don't touch the mat. Five, four, breathe, three, two, one. Don't touch the floor, swing it back to your high plank. Flip over to your side plank on the left, left palm, left foot. Right leg, take it up, straighten it towards the right side. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh my goodness, one more time, high plank. Last one, side plank on the right side, right palm, right foot. Left leg straighten, swing it towards the left side. Keep it as high as your hip. Don't let your ears sing, guys. Three, two, one. High plank. Side plank on the left side. Left palm and left foot. Right leg and hips up. Right leg towards the right. Keep it straight. As high as your hip. Don't let the ears sing. Three more breaths. Two more. One more. Release. Take it back. Child's pose. Oh. Shoulder strengthening using the plank poses to work on your shoulder strength in dynamic movements and in static holes. Long deep breath, reset, calibrate yourself. Okay, let's shift our attention to your core now. Come into the low lunge position, right foot forward, left knee down. I'm going to turn to this side. Okay, now twist towards the right, left elbow hooking on the outside of the right leg, palms together, and gentle twist. Relax your belly when you exhale, especially for those who are going deeper. You have the option to slide the elbow down to close up the gap between the armpit and the right leg if you want to for a deeper twist. Make sure you're breathing very calmly, otherwise it gets very compressive when you go too deep. For five. Notice here my armpit is pressing gently on my front knee. I can still talk very calmly. 
I have the space to twist. Some of you might need to adjust. Huh? Three. Two. And one. Untwist. Release. Step back. And then the other foot forward. Left foot forward. Right knee down. Twist towards the left. Right elbow hooking on the outside. Palms together. If you're good, you can slide the elbow down to close the gap between the armpit and the front knee. It's a deep twist for those going that deep. It's also an opening for your hips. Calmly breathe, calmly relax your belly when you breathe out. Stay for four, three, two, and one. Release. Take the downward facing dog. So I'm going to show you this pose, we're going to hold the pose and then after that we're going to work in some movements. It's a combination of the half split with a twist so you engage your core by the side. So what we'll do is that I will, let's turn this side, I will straighten my right foot forward into my half split position. I flex the ankle so the only point of contact with my leg on the floor is the leg on the mat is the right heel. You can notice my hips are directly above my left knee. My left toes I can tuck under or you can point your toes, whichever you prefer balance. I prefer to tuck under because I can use the heel a bit like a rudder of a boat to keep myself balanced, to steer myself in an equilibrium. Now you're going to take your palms to the heart centre, you're going to lean forward. You really need some stretch in the beginning. Keeping the position this way, don't let your right foot very easy for the toe to turn to the right side. Keep squeezing it in. So you get a stretch in your hamstring. Now you start to twist, you turn this way, find your balance, easy to look at the point in front of you or you can look up which is much more difficult, so you need to hug your legs together, there is some strength and this stretch combined together, okay? Go ahead, so first come into the half split position, straighten the right leg, flex the ankle, toes pointing up, now there's some leg engagement as you want to hug your legs together to stay balanced, keep the hips above your left knee, I give you some time to adjust, for you to absorb these three important verbal adjustments and then get ready lean forward, get a stretch, palms to heart centre, keep the spine long doesn't matter how high or how low it is, the lower you go the more difficult it is because you have the stretch to work with start to slowly twist towards the right, don't let your right toes turn to the right as well keep the right toes pointing up stay breathe for five and smile, four, see I'm doing it together with you and I'm still smiling, 3, go on, 2, 1.5, 0 0.6, and release, don't collapse, and take a downward dog. Aiyya! Nice. Make every pose, every movement very fluid, that is so easy that someone sees it. They think it's so effortless, but actually you're working very hard, but your facial expressions, the exterior of your face, you're very calm, you're still working hard. Okay, work on the other side, left foot forward, right knee down. Straighten the left leg, so that the hips are still above your bottom knee like this, flex the ankle. Keep your left toes always pointing up, so you always inject some awareness into this straight leg. Don't just stretch and twist, and then your leg goes along like a hitch drive. Okay, don't let it take a hitch right. Let the toes point up. Palms to heart center. Lean forward. Foam. Hug your legs to the center. Now you want to move your bottom knee forward and you want to drag your front heel backwards. And start to twist. Observe your left toes. Do not turn to your left. Stay. Breathe. Strengthen your legs. Do you have a core strength to keep your body floating without using your hands on the mat? Foam. Three, two, one, release. Downward dog, step back. All right, sit down on the mat. Boat pose, everyone. Good old boat. 
If you have blocks or heavy books, you can challenge your strength. The bog pole is like a letter V with your thighs and your torso, your back. So it looks like this. Or you can keep your legs straight for the deeper version, for the stronger version. If you don't want to, if you don't want to straighten your legs, you can place one or two blocks or some books on it to challenge your core strength. Your hands to hold the legs, either one hand to hold or both hands to hold or both hands release or both hands up. Okay, everybody, let's get ready. Come into position. And lift up to your Navasana, boat pose. Keep your shins preferably parallel to your mat. Aim to keep your back straight. Stay for five. Stay for four. Stay for three. Stay for two. And one. Stay in this board. Try not to hold the legs. You're gonna round the back. You're gonna roll back. You're gonna come back to this same pose without your feet touching on the mat. So you engage your core to stop your feet from dropping onto your mat. So round the back. Keep breathing. Roll back. Let me come back forward a bit so you can see. Roll back. Roll back. And try to take the legs back without using your hands. And then slowly take your time. Come back to your board without touching the mat. Lift up and. Quickly lock your spine straight so that you get your core muscles engaged. The slower you go, the easier, but not too slow that you cannot move to the front. The faster you go, the more difficult. Okay, let's do this six more times. Round the back and move back and come back up. Use a bit of momentum back to your boat without touching the floor. Okay, five more. Round the back, roll back, keep breathing and lift up. Roll back and lift up without touching the mat. Okay, last three, try to go faster. And roll. And roll. Last one. Roll and up for three, two, one. Release. Sit down. Butterfly pose. And stretch down. Keep your legs like a diamond shape. You want to go deeper, take your feet closer towards your hips. And fall forward. So use this practice this evening also to get a nice opening to your hips in addition to the lunges we have done. Stay for six. Stay for five. Four. Three. Two. And one. Release. Okay, now it's time. Let's have some fun with one arm balance. Arm balance requires shoulder strength and core strength. Two important things. And sometimes you use the core more than the shoulders in certain arm balances. Essentially, on some, some poses, we use more of your shoulder strength. There are a few classical arm balances that use a lot of your shoulder strength. So, you will have two arm balance. So, don't be... Don't be disappointed or angry that you cannot do any of those poses. It takes time to practice. Okay, we first work on the crow pose, which is like a, a most common arm balance that everyone sees in your Instagram pictures or in posters everywhere. So it's a, it's a decent pose, but it can be very challenging in the beginning. And then I think we still have time, we work on one balance, the peacock pose. Peacock pose is extremely difficult for your shoulder strength. It has a lot of shoulder strength and core and back strength. So later you work on your back. So let's work on the crow pose first. Crow pose, what you do, if you have cushions, I have lots of cushions in front of me so that if you fall, you just land your head on the cushion. This is how it looks like. So if you're not familiar, you can look at me. For those of you who are familiar what to do, and you go ahead, palms down, tuck your knees onto your armpits or on the outside of your upper arms. Lean forward. You must stick your head forward. Don't look back. Look forward, keep your spine lengthened, stick your neck forward, feel the weight getting lighter onto your toes and you can float one foot up. Perhaps you can float the other foot up by one centimeter and stay. And then you can, you can float it up and stay. Okay, go ahead and try. Try it for five to ten breaths. For those who can do the crow pose for a few breaths, try to go for six deep breaths instead. So you develop muscular endurance. Try. So you always overcome the fear with your bolster or pillow or a cushion or a towel in front of you so that you do not smash your face or your nose. Right? Important, a beautiful face. Pretty face, pretty face. Work on this. When I first started, I could barely hold for one or two breaths. And then after that, it becomes easier and easier once your body knows the alignment. Okay? 
Try it and pause. Take a breath. Let's do it one more time. I'm not sure about what you guys are doing, but there are a few common mistakes I usually see. Mistake number one, your elbows start to open up. So keep your elbows locked in. Okay? Mistake number two, when you lean forward, your elbows move back like this. You're doing this. You don't do this, okay? You lean forward so that your elbows, your elbows still remain above your wrist or slightly behind. You can see my elbows are always above the wrist. Right? Not going this way. Because this way you will never be able to balance. You must shift the entire weight forward. Then you lean slightly forward. Elbows still above the wrist. Don't let your elbows open to the side. Mistake number three, you look down or you look back. So keep looking forward. Lengthen your spine forward. You feel the weight very light, then you float one or both feet up. Okay, try one more time. Come on guys, try your best. If you're holding that, breathe for five, four, three, two, and one. Release. Sit down in any way you want to sit. Interlace fingers and just rotate your wrist in one direction. Release any tension off your wrist. In yoga, we spend so much time in downward dog, in many of the arm balances and other poses. Your, your hands are not meant to hold your weight. That's why we need to get them warmed up in this and all stretch up after we work on the arm balances for too long. Okay, now let's try the peacock pose. Peacock pose is extremely difficult for some of you because it requires tremendous shoulder strength. We work on this progressively. Maybe next week I'll start again with this, with the alignment. So when you work on a peacock pose, the pose looks like this. Your fingers pointing back, you bend the elbows, you tuck your elbows to a soft spot, a firm soft spot where you can feel your body and your elbows together. You straighten your legs, you lean forward, shoulder strength, lean forward until you can float the foot off, the legs off. You need to clench your buttocks and your back muscles as well. But the easier version, let's work on your elbows, with your elbows bent, you take your knees to the side like this. You need to find a sweet spot. The key is to find a sweet spot. Some of you will be on the outside of your body, somewhere near your waist, near your side of your body, some of you have to be under. Ladies, because you have your you have your bosom here, you have to tuck it under to find it's comfortable. So everyone's body is different. Fingers pointing backwards or slightly to the side if it's too intense. You have to get this alignment right for your own body first. Bend down, your legs bent like this, lean forward. Stay and feel the pressure on your palms, that's good enough, okay? Ready, and go, lean forward, breathe, stay. If you can, you start to float one foot off the mat, or both feet off the mat if you can, or just one foot, four, five, four, three, two, one. Come back down, release, interlace fingers, and rotate the wrists. switch direction another way we can do this round two if you have blocks you place the blocks by the side so you rest your knees on the block so your feet are already elevated your legs are already elevated you just need to clench your buttocks and your back a little back bend like you want to do a back bend but keep leaning forward to lift the knee or the thigh of the block, so able to float up. Okay? Even if it's 1 cm, you lose the energy, you drop it down, you can still be able to land on the block. Alright? Just one more round and then we'll wrap it up with some supported back strengthening. Come down here, flex the wrist, find a space in front of you, you you'll come down to tabletop, fingers pointing backwards, you bend the elbows, you lean forward, you place the elbows and your forms to a firm spot on that thing, if you rest the legs, oops, blocks too far, you adjust. You rest your legs, keep your legs bent on the blocks. Lean forward and float one leg off, or you can float both legs off. Stay for five, four, three, two, and one. Release. Enough for today. That pose is a very tough pose, but no worries, we do it progressively. Interlace fingers again, feel the stretch. Then, 
Take your hands forward, flip your palm, wrist, fingers down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, and down, up, and down, up, and down, up, and down. Okay, release. Okay, some back bends, unsupported to get your nice strengthening of your back. Lie down on your chest, on your mat, along the line of the mat. Keep your feet about hip distance, point your toes, arms behind you, 45 degrees on your floor. Press your toes down, lift the chest up. Keep your hands on the mat, very light, or your hands on the floor. Stay there for five. Four, three, two, one. Come back down. We're gonna do a few rounds each round. We're not gonna hold too long, so it's multiple rounds, more for endurance. Okay, this time arms away from the mat or the floor. Lift the chest. No different from the first round. Just that the arms are lifted up. Five, four. Squeeze your shoulder blades together. Get the shoulders working as well. Three, two, one more breath, and release. Come back down. Take your hands by your side, palms facing down. We're going to make some movement with your hands, try not to disturb your body. There is no space for me here, I'm going to turn to the front. So. Everybody lift up, take your hands, swing it to the front like you're doing a swimming, like Superman. Only your legs are on the mat, chest up and then swing your arms back. And then swing the arms forward, arms back, arms forward, making a big circle or semi-circle with your arms. The faster you move, the more you disturb your body, the more your back muscles have to keep your body very still. Continue for 10 more circles, 10, 9, 8. Seven, your back muscles holding your chest up, chest is lifted. Four, three, two, and one, and release. Come back down. Good, nice job. Sit up into a child's pose. Take your knees as wide as your mat, point your toes, big toes touching. Make a letter V with your legs, like your thighs, stretch your arms forward. Take a few more breaths in child's pose. And then sit up, let's do a simple spinal twist. Legs stretch in front of you, bend the right knee. You can cross the foot over to the left side for a deeper twist or you can still keep it here. Just simply twist towards the right, right hand on the mat, left hand on the outside of the right foot, bend the elbow, fingers pointing up, lengthen and twist. And looking past your right shoulder. Stay for five, four, Three, two, and one. Release. The other side, both legs straight. Bend your left knee. So your left foot is just next to your right knee. Or you can cross it over to the right side of your right knee, which is deeper. Twisting to your left. Left hand behind on the mat. Right hand hook it on the outside. Fingers pointing up. And twist. Stay for six. Five. Four, three, two, and one. Release. All right, we have about 30 seconds more. Let me know your comments if any. Thank you for this practice with me. And uh, the last post um, is, can be optional since it's online, but I'll suggest we take about three minutes or a couple of minutes to lie down in Shavasana. Right, close the eyes and just breathe calmly. In the meantime, I've got 10 more seconds. It's good to see everyone here in this practice. Join me again next Monday, 5.30 for this 
Yoga Strength Class. Stay safe, everyone. Namaste.